Recently, I finally visited Japan with my friends. We went to three cities in Japan and we started in Okayama, which was an hour bus ride and ferry to these art islands which were called Naoshima and Tashima. Then we rented a car and drove down to Fukuyama and while we were staying there we took an hour drive down to the Shimanami Kaido cycle. After that we went to a ryokan which was somewhere north of Okayama and finally we took a night bus to Tokyo with no explanations needed. So here are my stories from Japan. You know, when I completed architecture school two years ago, I remember being super burnt out. And like, I didn't want to see architecture anymore. I didn't want to hear architecture anymore. So my friend suggested that we visited these art islands that ooh, had nice architectural spaces. I honestly didn't really care. <laughs> but the experience I had, on the other hand, was nothing short of a life-changing one. The first day we were scheduled to go to Tashima Island and unfortunately for me, the day before when we arrived in Japan, I instantly caught a cold from how cold the place was and the morning that we were supposed to go, I was, I was not feeling it at all and I contemplated just staying back to rest but eventually I think I just somehow convinced myself to just take some Panadol and carry on, you know. When we got to the island, the main attraction that we wanted to go to was all the way at the other end and that was the only thing that we wanted to go to so we decided to just walk there instead of taking a bus and that was great because as we slowly walked along the island we saw the houses of those who lived there all their tiny little farms that they had they were growing their own vegetables to eat and some of them had interesting ornamentations around as well and we also passed by an abandoned school and yeah that was interesting seeing like um, you know just a random place that's in the middle where everyone stayed there and it's just abandoned and you don't really see that in Singapore we also passed by like small shrines it was nice it was a beautiful day like the air was fresh and yeah, the shrine was just so quaint. <laughs> and finally, we arrived at the main attraction, which was Tashima Art Museum. I don't have much footage from the place because you're not technically allowed to film inside the museum, but you can film it from the outside, so I'll just show some that I have. 
but I can say that this space literally healed me from how relaxing it was. It essentially is a giant concrete dome with two circular openings and this allowed sound from nature to come into the space and these tiny holes will pump up these little water droplets that collected into puddles and eventually when it's heavy enough it breaks away and it starts flowing down and the combination of the flowing water and the echoes of nature that entered the dome instantly cured my cold <laughs> After that experience, I thought nothing could beat that, right? And then we went to Nawashima Island on the second day. The island was riddled with art museums all over. All of them amazing in their own right, and I haven't visited them all. But my favorite was definitely the first one that we went to, which was Hiroshi Sugimoto's Gallery Time Corridors. And the gallery's architecture instantly stole the show. It was so enchanting. The way light was let in to create this soft glow that creates interest and guides you through the space. Like, it was so thought out, so beautiful. And I remember I had this moment when I, I stepped from the inside of the, the gallery to the outside and Dandelions were drifting, birds were chirping, in the distance you could hear waves crashing. All of it framed up so well by the architecture. I just can't put to words how magical it felt. In that moment, I kind of felt like a Disney princess or something. You know, three years I studied architecture, always questioning why we use all these fancy words to describe space. But now that I experienced it firsthand, I truly feel how indescribable the art of architecture is. Before I embarked on this trip, I never considered myself to be a city person. Coming from Singapore, which was already a very dense city in itself, it made me crave what I didn't have. But Japan changed my perspective on that entirely. Every city that we visited in Japan all seemed to possess such a different charm. Every place its own vibe and its own subculture. And yeah, it just changed my perspective entirely. Like the first city we went to, which was Okayama, just felt super warm and inviting. Maybe it was the things that we did along with the time of the year that we went but I just remember in the morning that we were in Okayama we decided to go for a run and I had a little situation where I got myself into because I had a stomach ache while running I am stuck in the toilet because there's no toilet paper <laughs> but Seeing the sunrise on that morning as I ran by the castle and through the garden and with my friend it just made me feel like the city was felt like a golden retriever. I don't really know how else to describe it. Yeah, just very friendly, very warm. 
very welcoming. Fukuyama on the other hand felt like a city that was trying to keep a secret from me or something. On the outside, it was kind of grimy and run down, but behind that, it was a super inviting and cozy place as well. You know, the day we were spent in Fukuyama was the day after we cycled the Shimanami Kaido. So we just wanted a relaxing day. One of the highlights of this place was going to this cafe. On the outside, it was unassuming. You know, you, you probably didn't think much about it. It looks pretty normal. But when you enter, you see this open space with like different tiers of levels. On the second level, there was second a second-hand clothes shop. On the first level, and like this sub-level, it was a nice cafe. And in the basement, they just sold like first-hand clothes. But all of the stuff there, were just so friendly and so stylish and they tried their best to communicate with us in English and just made us feel very welcome like the space itself they had this exterior of old but behind that it was just so vibrant Finally, Tokyo, which is not a secret at all. It kept so much of this Japanese charm while also being a tourist attraction for anyone. You know, it's a city for weeps. It's for the artists. It has a niche for everything. And that's what makes it so special. You know, it is really a city for anyone. All the cities were so interesting in their own right. Every city had its own little vibe and subculture and it made me realize how much people complete spaces in a city. Mm -hmm. 